some push for what they need. Some push for what they want. Some people like Peter J. Novins just push. If they do it hard enough and long enough, something might just push back from the Twilight Zone. Johnny, give me another one here, will you? Maybe late again? Hmm. No, maybe it's across town traffic. Maybe it's. Try to give me the phone, will you? Sure. Thanks. Connie, can I get some more ice over here, please? Thanks, man. How long you could be married? Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Let me buy you one. Dialed the number I know best instead of Jamie's office. I dialed my own number. Did you ever do that? Hello. Johnny, honey, I need that. Real I'm sorry. I must have dialed the wrong number. What number did you want? Klondike 5, 6189. This is Klondike 5, 6189. Who are you calling? Nah, I must have dialed wrong. This can't be Klondike 5, 6189. Yeah? That's the number you've reached. Who did you want? I wasn't calling anybody at this number. Wait a minute. Are you sure this is Klondike 56189? <laughs> I think I know my own number, pal. Who are you? Peter Novins. Who are you? I'm Peter Novins. This isn't funny. You sound just like me. Did dial my own number. You're in my apartment. What the hell are you doing in my apartment? My apartment. What a moron gag. Freddy, is that you? Who is this? Maury, is that you? Alan? Uh, nobody can imitate my voice like you. Come, Alan. Come on, man. Don't, Don't jerk, jerk my, my chain. Cha Wait a minute. I'm here. You can't be... You can't be in my own apartment. Skip Fisher's father, what did he do for a living? My God, Skip Fisher. I haven't thought about him in years. Skip's father was a fireman. Until he quit his job to go work at the Studebaker dealership. I don't believe this. This can't, this can't be happening. Uh, you okay, Mr. Novins? Johnny, if, uh, Jimmy shows up, tell her I couldn't wait. Tell her I, uh, if, tell her I had to go. What, what, don't want you, don't you want to leave a note or, or, or something? Hey, can't you see I got a problem here? Can't you see I got a situation here? Can't you just tell her? Peter J. Novins. It's me. Honest to God. You're not real. What do you want me to say to that? I know I'm me. Then what are you? <laughs> I'm gonna do something about this. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. How about if I come over there and kick your butt out into the street? I thought about that. But do you really think you want to risk it? What? You think this happens every day? You think that what we have here is ordinary? 
What does that got to do with me coming back to the apartment I live in? Did you ever hear that two objects can't occupy the same space at the same time? Basic. We can't both be Novans, can we? Come on. What now? More threats? Look, this is crazy. Even if all this is true, even if we're both Novens, there's nothing that says we can't both exist, can't both lead happy, separate lives. Who are you kidding? You can't lead a happy life by yourself. How are you gonna do it knowing I'm over here living your life too? You never were much one for sharing. What do you mean I can't lead a happy life? What do you know about it? What do I know about your life? Who do you think you're talking to? This is me, Novins. Me. There is nothing wrong with my life. Not one thing. Nothing. What's so wrong with it, wise guy? Everything. Just about every piece of it stinks on ice. The sad part is, you know it. You still won't make repairs. Well, that changes. From today on, that changes. If only one of us is going to make it, it's going to be me. And just how do you propose to do that? You're out there, locked down. I'm in here. At home. Safe. I can continue to do my work. I can continue to lead my life. Yeah? Well, look at it this way. You're trapped in there. Locked away inside three and a half rooms. And once you step out, and you will, I'm going to be waiting to step back in. And once I'm in, I'm going to stay in. I'll tell the landlord and an imposter is trying to break into my apartment. And that is how I propose to do it. Close out my checking account, please. Okay. Take the balance and a cashier's check. Will you be transferring those funds to a different account? No, I'll be transferring them to another bank, actually. Oh, I hope you weren't dissatisfied with our service. No. No, uh, nothing like that. It's a personal matter. Yeah, you heard me. I've had just about as much of your incompetence as I can take. Come in. Your groceries stink, your prices are outrageous, and your delivery boy's got the brains of a russet potato. Oh, yeah? Good. It suits me just fine. <laughs> you sure you don't want any lunch? No, tea will be fine. Listen, I got kind of an upset stomach. Maybe you can run out and give me some Gaviscon. Here, keep the change. Hey, no problem. Be right back. How'd you enjoy your first day being in my skin? Fine. How'd you enjoy your first day out of it? Listen, friend, I've got your act covered. The checking account is gone. No more groceries will be delivered. So you're gonna have to go out and get some food. And when you do, I will be there. You're a little late. I've already been out. I've got enough groceries to last through a siege. Remember the $200 I hid in the jewelry box? Remember that old Jack London novel, Star Rover? How he used astral projection to get out of his body? Well, I think that's what happened to me. 
They said you went while I was sleeping, maybe. And I've decided I'm me. You're just a little piece of me that wandered off. I'd get along just fine without you. <laughs> Great theory, man. But try this one. Remember the weekend? I went with the Kenny's lab and he took that trillion photo of my, my aura? Well, this is my theory. Somehow something, something got, something got out. I don't know. Some part of me, some, uh, something. Both sound pretty lame, don't we? Mother called this morning. Oh, great. What you want? She said she knew you lied about having to leave Florida early when you were down there visiting. She called here. The answering service gave her the number of the hotel in Miami you checked into. Well, wonderful. You, you know how she is. I was going buggy. I mean, what was I supposed to do? It was one day, for God's sake. She said she loved you. And she forgave you. And that all she wants is for you to share her life with her. Swell. I suppose you didn't do anything to make her feel any better. On the contrary. I did something you never would have done. I made arrangements for her to come here and live with me. What? Are you out of your bloody mind? How am I going to take care of that old woman in New York? I've got work to do. I've, I've got places to go. I have a life to lead. Not anymore, you don't, you pathetic loser. Maybe you can live with your bad gut feelings about her, but not me. She arrives next week. You're crazy! Yeah. And you just lost your mother. Chew on that one. This isn't gonna work, is it? My God. You sound terrible. Just a depression of fluid will pass. We oui. can't go on like this. And she was living half a life. We oui. have to work this out. Yeah. I know. Deserves to be Peter Novins. Should be the one to take over the life. Does that sound reasonable to you? I don't know. Just a, every everybody deserves to go on living. Oh God, spare me the philosophy, will you, Novins? You don't believe that for a second. You're a misanthrope. You hate people. Not true. Just hate some of the things people do. Guys who put save the wheel bumper stickers on their cars and then buy their wives for coats. Hypocrite. You have the gall to complain about that and you took on that Cumberland account? That's another thing entirely. Sure it is. You know damn well Cumberland's gonna strip mine the guts out of that county and they'll get away with it. That publicity campaign you dreamed up. Great PR man, Novins. 
but you've got the ethics of a weasel. For God's sakes, what was I supposed to do? I have to make a living, don't I? If I didn't do it, somebody else would have. I suppose you would have turned it down. That's exactly what I did, old buddy. I called him this morning and told him to stuff that account up their noses. Head is pounding. Why are you doing this to me? You got it all wrong, Novins. You did this to yourself. Apologize for the way you treated her. It wasn't easy. She really hates you. It's... Then I guess you deserve it, don't you? Is that... Is that true? True, Novins. Flat true. You went after Patty. You got her. Leave her old man. You said her and her kid up in that apartment, and I... as soon as you got bored with her, you... I remember it that way. No. Of course you don't. Jamie last night. We talked about our our future. Mm. We really took some fast talking, man. She was starting to hate you too. But it's gonna work. I'll make it work. I don't intend to have any more years like I've had in Opens. From this point on, it changes. I'll name the first one after you, Peter. starting to clear up outside. They gave me the key at the front desk. terms with it. That'll help. I remember the archetypes from Jung. I mean, my shadow. Or my persona. Ego. When I first got loose, I uh, guess I was the shadow. Now I'm the self. Now I'm becoming the shadow. No. You're becoming a memory. That's pretty ungracious. I was sick for a long time, Peter. I don't know what the trigger was that broke us apart. But it happened. I can't be sorry. If it hadn't, I'd have been you till I died. It would have been a lousy life and a miserable death. Too late to worry about it now. Things going well with Jamie? Yeah. Mom comes in Tuesday. I uh, spoke to her doctor, as they say. 
She doesn't have very long. But for whatever she's got, I'm determined to make up for the last 25 years since Dad died. That's good. Listen, I just came by to uh, see if there's anything you wanted, anything you would have done if things had been different. Taking care of that. Figured that would be on your mind. That's good. Thanks. Anything else? Well, I have to go. Yeah. Well, take care of me, will you? Peter J. Novens, both victor and victim of a brief struggle for custody of a man's soul. A man who lost himself and found himself on a lonely battlefield somewhere in the Twilight Zone. up again oh oh boy ah, go back to sleep yeah easy for you to say Susan come here and put things on the table honey oh my gosh go upstairs and brush your hair I brushed it already I brushed it already at least I don't look like a boy I don't look like a boy you mom. too Quit it, and then put these around, okay? Ah, oh, you can have coffee cake this morning. Come on. Bertie, go sit down. Now, Mommy's going to bring the coffee cake. It's smoking. Bertie, go sit down. you go put it under your pillow. Would you turn that down? <laughs> World War Three around here. <laughs> Not any different than any other morning. How are you? <laughs> Where are you? The second stand. Where does he think I am? On the phone! The seeds in my shoes, huh? You know, when I suggested you plant a garden so we could grow our own vegetables, I did not mean for you to plant them in my closet. Well, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to call you back, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Oh, the bacon. Oh! Oh, Ross! I'm sorry, but that's your territory. I'm sorry. You don't have to fix it, Ross. Just turn it off, please. Thank you. I'm going to have to call that repairman. I...
Wouldn't it be nice if once in a while everyone would just shut up and stop pestering you? Wouldn't it be great to have the time to finish a thought or spin a daydream? To think out loud without being required to explain exactly what you meant? If you had the power, would you dare to use it? Even knowing that silence may have voices of its own? To the Twilight Zone? We're just going to get dinner, and then we're going to pick up Janet and Susan. Mom, I want some choco poppers. We don't need choco poppers. I want them. I want them. Get, get some choco poppers. Well, mind your own business. Oh, Rusty, come back here, honey. Rusty? Oh, Did too. Mom, where'd my bullets get? They can't find them anywhere. A 
I'm sure honey, you hey, honey, I'm look, I asked you to sew this. I had to leave right after dinner tonight. Right you know, I got softball practice. Now, you know that. Can I my softball practice? I had to leave right after dinner, remember? You know, you Talking. Are you going to do it now or not? I mean, I really need you to do this. Shut up. Start talking? Start talking. Hey, hey, where'd you go? What's happening? Hey, hey. Wait a minute. How, how, how'd you get over there? How did you, how did you manage to get over there? Hey, 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 She stated that both should, quote, set their petty concerns aside and get down to the serious business at hand. The arms talks are scheduled to resume tomorrow, although, as of late today, representatives of both sides were threatening to the show. to stay right here, right here, around my neck, <gasps> forever. Start talking. Nationwide activist organization, Nonpop, issued a statement saying that if the current arms reduction talks break down, life as we know it will be an ever- should be. Don't everybody talk at once. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Harold, we need a 
asking for choco poppers all week. Oh, I, I, so have mine. <laughs> well, I guess you'll just have to go ask the manager if they have any more, because I this one's mine. On oh, yeah? There. Well, maybe you better just shut up. Oh, yeah. Let's see, uh, 20, 40, 51. 51. Now, oh, yeah. Here you go. Oh, do it. <sighs> I hate to bother you, Zonkers, but there's somebody at the door. Hold your horses. Hello. How are you today? Hi. Hi. What do you want? Don't worry, we're not here to sell you anything. No, of course you're not. What do you want? We're from Nonpop. Perhaps you've heard of us. I have. I've heard of you. Uh, what do you want? Well, you've heard of us, but do you know what it is we stand for? Do you know what it is we're trying to do? Uh, the future of the world's at stake here, ma'am. We're concerned. We're deeply concerned. And we know that you are, too, so we'd like to invite you to a debate that Non-Pop is sponsoring. Yes, and the subject is nuclear weapons. Should we or shouldn't we? Should we or shouldn't we what? Should we or shouldn't we allow nuclear weapons to exist on the face of this planet? Isn't that obvious? Your next-door neighbor, Mrs. McMillan, is going to attend. No, I, I don't have the time. Actually, I do have the time. It's just that I don't want to waste my time on some stuffy old debate. So, goodbye to you. Wait, please. Excuse me for being forward. But if people like yourself don't start taking an interest in what is going on between the various countries of this world... Ooh. People like myself. Yes. You don't understand. If people like you don't I start caring, there may not be a world left up. to care. Phew. Yeah. That's better. Mm, that's much better. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's much better. Lie down. Come on. There. 
Just a minute. People like yourself have to become involved. What happened? I don't know. Come on. No, wait. Let's skip this one. as much as he wants. The children can scream as much as they obviously need to. Zonkers can howl at the telephone. Hey, Penny! Penny? Penny? What now? Russell, why don't you just... Penny! Penny! Russ? Penny? Is come, come, come in. Now, come here, come here. Now, listen, listen. Penny, what? Come what? Now, come here. We've just had a confirmation this first Soviet missile will reach the U.S. airspace in a matter of minutes. What the? Okay, okay. Those of you listening should immediately go to the nearest public shelter. Why, why is it? It's not... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Take it easy, take it easy. Oh, Listen, here's what we're going to do. Oh, Listen, uh, stupid. Uh, let's get the kids together. And uh, let's go. Let's, uh, let's see. Shh.
Biothermic dilator. Electro-myographic Okay. Spig... Momentum... Spigonometer? Spig... Spigonometer? Where did I get this word? Uh, what time did you get to sleep last night? Who knows? 2, 2.30. What time did you cover me? Mm, 4. Were you able to make much of a dent? Barely. How did they expect us to learn 67 new products in one week? Biothermic dilators and electromyographic Entro, entro something or other. I don't know why old man Boatwright is so hopped up about this new line of medical equipment anyway. What's wrong with the old line the company's been selling since I started there? Hey, buckaroo! How are you this morning? Fine. He's still got a runny nose. And he's still got a fever. Maybe you should call Dr. Chapman. No, oh, he's still out of town. And I don't like that guy who's handling the office for him, Dr. Bumper. Bumper? Is that really his name? Yeah. What's funny about that? Nothing, I guess. I gotta go. Bye. Bye. Here. Low. Good. Morning. Morning, Bill. Hey, Ginger had her litter last night. Want to see him? Maybe later. I'm coming home for lunch. How many did she have? Nine. Nine? I know. That's quite a few for a small dog like an encyclopedia. But Ginger came through like a champ. You said encyclopedia? Yeah. Encyclop... Ginger is an encyclopedia? Last time I looked, she was. Well, you knew that, Bill. Come on, give me a break, will you? <laughs> Automatic dilator, electromyograph, electromyograph. You know, I think this medical equipment's gonna sell like gangbusters. Oh, prop. Oh, hiya, Bill. Still learning the new line, huh? <laughs> I guess what they say about old dogs and new trumps is true. Don't let it get you down, Billy Boy. It may take us a little longer to learn it, but we got the one thing only time can give you, mayonnaise. Yes, I mean, I speak to Doug Seaver, please. This is Bill Lowry, McConnell Denton calling. Listen, Bill, can I get back to you? My wife's waiting for me. Today's our 17th wedding throw rug, and I'm taking her out for a sale and then for dinner. Uh, I'm sorry, Doug. Today's your what? It's our throw rug. Your throw rug? Right. 17th. Talk to you tomorrow. Uh, oh, Doug, wait. Throw rug? Where do you want to go? Oh, yeah. I'm going to just head on. Well, hi, Robbie. Oh, hey, Mr. Lowry. You know that new girl in accounting, Barbie? Sure. Well, I've been asking her out and asking her out, and she finally says okay. She's going to be here in five minutes, and I can't think of any place that take her for dinosaur. I mean, I thought of the Capitol Inn, but it might look like I'm trying too hard. What do you think? You're planning to take this girl out for dinosaur, huh? <laughs> That's right. Dinosaur? Uh-huh. Wait a minute. You're saying dinosaur? Yeah. I'll see you guys down there. Okay. What is this, some sort of new wave expression or something? Saying dinosaur instead of lunch? No. Then what are you talking Look, about, Mr. Lowry? If you don't want to, I mean, if you can't think of any place, I'll just ask somebody else. Yeah. Robbie. Hi, honey. Hi, sweetie. How was your morning? Pretty good, I guess. Except for one really strange thing that happened. I was leaving work. And this kid, Robbie, works in the mailroom. He stops me and he says... Excuse me, sweetie, I don't mean to interrupt you, but this is going to be done pretty quick, and I wanted you to look in on Donnie before we eat. Was something the matter? His cold's getting worse. He's so pale and awfully congested, and he didn't touch his dinosaur when I took it into him.
What? What did you say? I said I think Donnie's cold is getting worse. No, no, no. Did you say dinosaur? Mm-hmm. He wouldn't touch it, and it's his favorite tuna fish. Why are you saying dinosaur? What do you expect me to say? Did Robbie or someone from work call you and tell you to say dinosaur as a joke or something? Robbie, who's Robbie? Why would he call me? Then why are you saying dinosaur instead of lunch? Dinosaur instead of lunch? Bill, what are you talking about? Can't you hear what you're saying? You're saying Donnie wouldn't touch his dinosaur. I know. And I'm a little worried. Dinosaur? Come on, Kathy, it's lunch. The word is lunch. Lunch? What has lunch got to do with anything? What has lunch got to do with any... All right. Okay. What does lunch mean? Bill, you know what lunch means. What does it mean? Tell me! It's a color, you know, sort of reddish, a light red. Honey, this is, this is almost ready. Would you please go up and check on Donnie while I dish this up? Man, the Dodgers tea leafed the Giants last night. They almost lost it, too. If Sachs hadn't hit that luggage run home in the ninth. Couch, Bill. Oh, I'm a saddle desert Streisand fan anyway, but her son movies absolutely candles. Hold all my calls, Cindy. Uh, okay, what? Hold all my calls. Sure, Mr. Thunder. Timid waffle. Right. Timber Hinge. Pine the fine, you capital. Reason. Eagle type is clogged. Dill popular, Ben Regal Day, climb Titan, only cattle spark Western pottery. A Yankee home. He inch, well, in the iris. Regal Day climb, huh? Timber hinge. Big tarch the zoom this carload whistle. Use Metro Panther call, Blade. Inch. Airport. 
resist session on weather. Peaches today sky shadow, but gilt sesame should reach leaping. Churchill and dipping but carriage, huh? Hinge go off tire. Of Kim Beef Tone. I tiny fan. Fan tumbling egg. Dark out or go kettle rot. That Van Collins would but can. Darling. Moon tight, moon tight. He has a very high fever. He's breathing. Could be pneumonia. We better get him to the hospital right away. Get the blanket. Get the blanket. Kathy, the blanket. Excuse me, my boy is having trouble breathing. Smith proper? Kathy! Smith, sir. I a guide, tiny. Ben Day, Ben Cool style mop. Work banter sneeze. Fell down the road, Sheriff Plaster, Watchwood. Was biomass handy race? Late when Susan. So quick, Red. Ain't got a slim packages. Voting tart rod capital. Wine mental aid van cattle renting Jupiter. Uncle Confidence? A slot. A slot Lebate renting. Thank you, Lord. Thank you very much for my boy. I hope you can understand me.
question trembles in the silence. Why did this remarkable thing happen to this perfectly ordinary man? Wednesday. Wednesday. It may not matter why the world shifted so drastically for him. Existence is slippery at the best of times. What does matter is that Bill Lowry isn't ordinary. He's one of us, a man determined to prevail in the world that was, in the world that is, or the world that will be, in the Twilight Zone. Hey, darling. Surprise? Surprise is not the word. <laughs> I'll get you for this. Oh, no wonder everybody went home early. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, Rosalie. Hi, Rosalie. Happy birthday. Hello. Happy birthday, Christy. Shauna. <laughs> Well, go on, Mark. Take her coat. Take her coat. I'll stay a while. I guess I'll have fun. <laughs> you look like you could use a drink. Yeah, I think he is a good one. Yeah. How do you hang on to him? Him? He's got this thing for older women. <laughs> Make a wish, darling. Christy. Yeah. Maybe you should use this. <laughs> <laughs> There you are. I wondered where you'd banished to. How's the party? I uh, guess that wasn't the very best idea I've ever had. Huh? No, it was sweet. You're sweet. Just hate birthdays. <laughs> birthdays are fun. Fun? Yeah, they're fun when you're 10 and you're hoping for a new bicycle, they're fun. But when you're 40 and you're worried about your ratings, they're a cruel joke. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. You still got at least five good years on your warranty, and then after that, I can trade you in on a couple of 20-year-olds and a nymphette to be named later. Should I kill you now or torture you first? Come on, it's not that serious, is it? Easy for you to say, Mark. You're getting character lines, and I'm getting crow's feet. That doesn't go over big in television, especially if you're a woman. You are the best anchor in town and the most beautiful woman I know. Just saying that to make me feel good. <laughs> so say some more, dummy. <laughs> well, one picture is worth a thousand words. Yep. Oh, I remember. <laughs> this is that little hotel in Santa Barbara. Yeah, it is. And I have got us booked in there for three days next week. Martha. But there's more. What? I have got front row seats to the annual Shakespeare Festival. Oh, Mark, don't tempt me. Why not? It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. <sighs> Come on, you've got some vacation days stored up. They can find us a fill-in for you. But that's mm. just what I'm afraid of. I mean, you know... Villains become replacements. Hmm. We'll take the uh, anchor chair with us. <laughs> Would be nice to get away. Yeah. Just the two of us. I love you.
Hi. Hi. <sighs> you look tired. Are you okay? <laughs> Don't be smug, Shauna. You'll hit 40 someday, too. You won't like it any better than I do. I hit 40. Years ago. Oh, Shauna, I'm not in the mood. You don't believe me, do you? No. Here. 1939. That's incredible. What did you do? Have a facelift? <laughs> now, what? How? No way. It's half an hour before airtime. I get tipsy on half a glass of wine. No, no, no. It's not what you think it is. Here. It's water. What is this, one of those eight glasses a day diets? Forget it. Those things never work. This works. And besides, if it's just water, what have you got to lose? No, thanks. I don't think so. Suit yourself. Okay, Christy. Final copy, kiddo. We're gonna lead with the fighting in Nicaragua and then move right into the riots in Cape Town. We get some very hot footage off the satellites. So that bumps Shauna's piece on the pandas? Hard news only at the news break. God, she'll be on with you at six. And speaking of Shauna, she's gonna be filling in for you next week. You got any problems with that? Uh, no, I guess not. Have a good one. Good afternoon. This is Christine Copperfield with Newsbreak. Sandinista forces. Hey, Bob. Marty. Where can we talk? Oh, step over here. Fire began. In a pitched battle outside of the city, Contras inflicted heavy. I left a copy of the viewer demographics report on your desk. I want you to take a look at it before the meeting tomorrow. Why? Is there a problem? Yeah, there's some concern upstairs about our news division. Oh. Listen, don't be like that, Marty. We're only talking about a few cosmetic changes. Fresh look, something a little more hip, you know. Maybe a new set. A new set, that's it? No, not quite. We need to talk about Christy, too. Why? The numbers are way down. <sighs> look, Christy is as solid as they come. Look, we don't make up the numbers. Let's face it, Christy is old news. And old news is boring. An upcoming congressional vote on further sanctions against South Africa is expected to be sped up by the latest actions of the Pretoria regime. Terrific. Good. Good. Shoulder. One more shoulder. Over your chin. Good. Work. That's it. Good. Come on. That's it. Go. Yes. Good. All right. Four. Four. to me. Come on. That's it. Go. Good. Good tap. All right. All right. Drop it. Again. Looks like Mark's got quite an eye for talent. Okay. It's his job, Shauna. Some job. Hold it. Terrific. Come on. Give it to me. Come on. Looks like Mark works hard, too. Go. Yes. Terrific. Does he enjoy the fringe benefits? Remember when you had a body like that? Hi, girls. I'll tell Mark you're here. No, Ted, don't bother him. We're just going down to Moynihan's to have a drink, and we wanted to know if he wanted to join us. But how much longer is this going to take? Not long. We're almost done. Good. Good. Okay, straight ahead now. Chin up. That's good. Great. Terrific. How come you're so anxious to share it? What's in it for you? Nothing. I get a free bottle from the distributor when I send them a new customer. I'm your friend. I just hate to see you like this. Trust me. Uh-huh. Looking good. Aqua Vita water. For the young at heart. Five or six glasses to start. After that, no more than a glass a day. 
Key goes here, like this. Now, don't lose it. Cooler won't work unless the key's in place. Never had to lock up my water before. Well, suit yourself. You don't mind a maid getting into it, fine. Uh, we don't have a maid. My boyfriend always says that if God wanted us to drink water, he wouldn't have invented beer. <laughs> Is this stuff really gonna make me young? Nobody can make you young. Aquavita water can make you look young. Hey, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> well, that's a pretty superficial attitude. I'm a superficial kind of guy. <clears throat> How much do I owe you? Oh, there's no charge for the first one, Missy. Missy? Can I ask you a question? How old are you? Don't ask. My God. Good morning. Boy, are you looking great. You been working out? Uh, when would I have time to do that? <laughs> well, you're doing something. You look fabulous. This new hairdo? Kiss me. <laughs> oh, Mark, I'm sorry. I've been so moody lately. That birthday just threw me. Yeah, you've been under a lot of pressure lately. It's gonna be great for the two of us to get away for a couple of days. Yeah. It's romantic of you to remember that little hotel. That's where I first knew you were the one. <sighs> Christy! Here's the trail for us. Oh, the bodies will never be found. Okay. Hold it. Oh, honey, haven't you taken enough pictures of me already? I know what you want. You are really looking better than ever. Well, in that case, how can I refuse you? Miss Bicycle, 1986. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Wow, that's what I like. <laughs> oh, great. These are great. Yes. right now. What are you talking about? I don't want to talk about it. Uh, I'll take this. You take those. Where are you going? We have to get back to town right away. Well, what do you know? This is still in one piece. Toilet running over? No. So tell me, what was so damn important that you had to ruin our whole vacation? You'd never understand. Christy! Mark. I'm sorry. Look, I don't, I don't want to talk about it, OK? I wanted to ask you something about the uh, water. You didn't mention the side effect. Oh, don't worry. It's not dangerous. It goes away with the next glass. Besides, it's a small price to pay, isn't it? I mean, you look great. 
your ratings are up. And I hear that there's a rumor going around about a feeler from KPSC. <sighs> Care to confirm? Well, I have to protect my sources, but uh, let's just say I'm grateful. And if I do make the move, I can put in a good word about the anchor chair. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. I'm perfectly happy on features. I'll take my pandas over politicians any day. <laughs> but if you really are grateful, you know I am. I owe you one. I've come up a little short this month. Could I ask you for a small loan? Sure. Sure, what do you need, a couple of hundred? I was thinking more along the lines of a few thousand. That's a lot of... Uh... It's not a lot of money between friends who help each other out. Sure. Okay. To Aqua Vita for... 5,000. Uh, pardon me? I said 5,000. You've got to be kidding. That stuff doesn't even last. Nothing lasts in this world, Missy. Didn't anyone ever tell you that? Five thousand dollars? That is infuriating. I could have you investigated, you know. I mean, what kind of racket is this? Hey, if you don't want it, I'll just take it back. No, damn you. Then that'll be five thousand. And I'll take your check today, but next time, it's going to have to be cash. I was just thirsty, that's all. Go back to bed. If you wanted a glass of water, the bathroom's a lot closer. I didn't want tap water. Since when? You've been drinking tap water for years. You know, ever since uh, you started with this water, you've been acting weird. What's with this stuff? Maybe I ought to try a glass. No, there's not enough. I mean, Mark, you don't even like water. You're the one who always said that if God wanted us to drink water, he wouldn't have invented beer. That's called a joke. I used to be able to recognize them without my pointing them out. What is wrong with you? Nothing that a little privacy wouldn't cure. I just don't like being cross-examined, that's all. Maybe you're right. You want to be alone? Fine, be alone. I'll be staying at the studio if you need anything. Good. Sean, it's Mark. Open up, will you? I can't see you, Mark. Sean, I've got to talk to you about Christy. It's important. Call me on the phone. I can't see you now. Shauna, you don't understand. It's important. Go away. I said go away. It's Aquavita. I'm sorry. Just a moment. Oh, my God. Ah! Oh, no. Oh. Oh, no. 
water, no. Gotta stop, you know that, don't you? You didn't see Shauna, I did. You've got to stop now. I can't. I want to, Mark, but I can't. Look at me, I'm old. No, 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 you are not old. You only look old. Now, there's a world of difference, Christy. You know that, you're not Shauna. You know, the station will let me go. It's not gonna be easy. But we've been through bad times before. I, I, there are other jobs. You are a journalist. You're a writer. You're not just a face. You'll get something. What about us? What about us? You don't see me going anywhere, do you? I love you. easy to say. Look at me. If we walk down the street, people are going to stare at us if we hold hands. If we go back to our cute little hotel, people are going to think you're some kind of gigolo. How are you going to feel the first time somebody mistakes me for your mother? Sorry for you. Sorry? Why? You're stuck with a dirty old man for the next 30 or 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> sure you don't mind? No. Not with this dirty old man. It makes me young. In here. There is indeed a fountain of youth, but not the one Ponce de Leon dreamed of. The true fountain of youth lies in the human heart, and its healing properties are without price, an oasis flowing ever fresh from the headwaters of the Twilight Zone. Reviewing sandwiches. Solely on word of mouth. <laughs> it's on Roxanne and Clover, and I highly recommend it. No one in the Next greater metropolitan night, area cares what you usual. recommend. Well, come on, Harry. You and I used to go to that place all the time. You love their cheesesteak sandwiches. That was a long time ago, Max. My reputation is built on reviewing sophisticated establishments. Your reputation is built on trashing restaurants. I have never trashed any establishment. I've exposed them. <laughs> yeah, well, the nastier you are when you expose them, the more your readers like it. Let me 
tell you about a wonderful little out-of-the-way Chinese restaurant I just discovered. Mr. Lee's Chinese Cuisine. The food is absolutely heaven. Very possibly the best in the city. It's in a little alley off Harbor Street downtown. Hard to find, but worth the effort, I assure you. This is Dana Duchal. Mr. Lee's Chinese cuisine. If you love your Pekingese, don't ask for a doggy bag. Is Mr. Lee's really that bad? I wouldn't know. I've never had the displeasure of dining there. What? Don't worry, I'll stop by later. I'll need a matchbook for my collection. I have a feeling Mr. Lee's is going to be closing rather soon. But that's not ethical, Harry. And it's not fair to the restaurant. Dear boy, in the arena of restaurant criticism, there's only excellent and poor. There's no such thing as fair. Something wrong? Could I have my check, please? Now, what is this? Is this chicken or the shrimp? That's both. Ah, that's great. No, I don't know where she's going. No, no, wait. This place is always. No, thank you. Where's my check? I cannot ask you to pay for a dinner you did not like. There is no check. Only this. My heritage is rich with the tradition of preparing and serving food for others. If someone has not enjoyed something I have served, then I must make amends. I bring you one very special fortune cookie for our most very special customers only. I hope it will please you and you will come back again. Grand reward awaits you just around. Oh, okay. Hey, you! Come here! Stop! Hey, you okay? They're all here. A hundred thousand dollars worth of diamonds, two armed security guards, and what happens? Some punk chunky runs up and grabs the bag like it's nothing. Mister, you're a lifesaver. You deserve a reward. I'm going to give you the thousand dollars these clowns were supposed to have. What? Hey, wait a minute. Oh, shut up. These guys were due for a bonus of a grand. I want to give it to you. Come on back to my office. I want to give you your reward. here last night. You are Harry Folger. You are the man who wrote all those bad things about Mr. Lee in newspaper this morning. I, I realize I may have been a little hasty in my review, but now I understand what you mean when you say you have a very special Chinese restaurant here. The fortune cookies alone are worth a visit. Mr. Lee's a very good restaurant. People like our food very much. I'm sorry. I apologize. I promise to make it up to you. 
I'll write a follow-up review that'll have him lined up four deep in that alley out there. Many people read your review. They called this morning to cancel reservations. I promise to make everything right for you. Next week, maybe. But right now, I'd like a table for one. And afterwards, one of your special fortune cookies. Are you certain you want another special fortune cookie? Yes. People are not always pleased with what their special fortune cookie says. Oh, I'll take my chances. Very well. Thank you. May I take your order, please? Yes, thank you. I'd like to start with your shark fin soup, then some of the Sichuan chicken salad, and yummy. And then I think I'll try some of the shrimp. I don't understand this fortune. It says April arrives today bringing romance. This is September. This fortune doesn't mean anything. There's nothing special about this. I assure you, you have received the fortune you deserve. Oh. Then my review stands as is. Quite all right. No, 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 I should have been looking where I was going. It's, it's just that I'm late for an interview. I only got into town this morning, and I can't find this stupid address. Well, what address are you trying to find? The Pressman building. It's supposed to be right around here. Well, I'm headed there right now. I'd be happy to show you the way. Oh, you don't know how much I'd appreciate that. Thank you. I can't believe it was just around the corner. I have been up and down this block, I swear, for 20 minutes. Amazing. Well, the office you're looking for is right down those stairs. Oh, thank you. I was thinking, since you're new in town, uh, perhaps we could... I'd like that. You would? Uh-huh. Maybe dinner tonight. That'd be great. I'm staying at the Hotel Clearbridge. Around 8? Mm-hmm, that'd be fine. See you then. Oh, wait! I can't ask for you if I don't know your name. April. April Hamilton. You say this restaurant is special? Very special. Tell me, how? No. You'll have to wait and be astonished for yourself. Honestly, save some room. I have a late reservation at a fabulous little bistro across town. I'm sorry, Harry. I can't help myself. You know, this really is excellent Chinese food. We barely had a bite. I'll wait. But if we didn't come here to eat, then why? For this. Thank you, Mr. Lee. What? The fortune cookies? These are very special fortune cookies, April. Fortunes in these cookies come true. I know it sounds incredible. It is. Open yours. Go on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What's it say? A grievous error in judgment will soon be made apparent to you. Take heed. What's that supposed to mean? Oh my God, what's wrong? How dare they? What the hell do you think you're doing? Do you think I'm gonna sit still for this? Harry, my God, what's the matter? What could it possibly have said? Get Lee out here this instant. Your boss, get him here now. Where are you going? I think I just better leave. Oh, fine. Go on, go on, get out of here. This fortune, how dare you give me something like that? You only get the fortune you deserve. Like hell, you knew exactly what fortune you gave me, and I'm not going to stand for it. 
I say means something in this town. I'll be back with friends. Friends from the Department of Health who can make things very uncomfortable for you, little man. Oh, my God. Oh. Ah. Oh, I, I've never felt so hungry. What's been done to me? But somebody's gonna pay. Believe me. Somebody's gonna. Oh! No! It can't be. How can I still be hungry? No. 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 Check, please, for Mr. Harry Folger, for whom the phrase dim sum is not merely a description, but a damnation. A man who finds himself sitting down to a single, never-ending course of just desserts, prepared for him in the kitchens of the Twilight Zone.